Park Center. The beginning of our Midwest World War II Museum starts right here, and there are three different stories about imprisonment during World War II. One of them is about the 15,000 German-American civilians who were interned, for example, in North Dakota, which is pictured on that sign. There was also a camp for them in at Camp McCoy in Wisconsin, and even here in St. Paul, Minnesota, there were detention centers at the Home of the Good Shepherd Convent in Frogtown, and people were interned at the Ramsey County Jail. What Midwesterners experienced here in the Midwest and in Berlin, for example, during the rise of the Nazis. We have here a book printing display portraying what was going on in the spring of 1933. There were actually Midwesterners living there at the time and working as, as diplomats and journalists, and they, they saw the madness as the Nazis took power. And this room tells those stories. Several of our exhibits have to do with Quaker responses to those fleeing the Nazis, Jews and others who were refugees. One of them is this scattergood hostile story, a Quaker boarding school in Iowa that took in 186 Jews and others fleeing the Nazis, and they brought them here to the Midwest, Iowa, Minnesota, Dakotas, and Illinois in this region. Quaker representatives in Europe helped refugees secure immediate needs like visas and passage money. Iowa Quakers, with their modest resources, channeled efforts into long-reaching acts of human kindness, opening their homes to the war-torn Europeans whose harrowing escapes had led them to the United States. In addition to therapeutic social activities, the Scattergood staff provided health care, language classes, and job training hoping to give refugees, or guests as they were called, a foundation on which to rebuild their lives. They wanted these tattered and tired people to feel that they were worthy of respect, even if they learned fabulous English and they could work wonders with a hammer and saw, if the people had not found their own centers, if they had not rediscovered themselves about Scattergood, all the practical training in the world might have made a big difference. When you're under that much attack, under that much stress, I think your soul goes on vacation. You have to vacate your life, your biography. Even though the staff didn't know these people and had no obligation to help them, the Quaker college kids and farmers who ran Scattered Hostel brought them over, gave them English lessons, driving lessons, and basically tried to help these people, the unwanted elements of the Nazis' new Germany, find a new life in the new world. Among Patton's troops who arrived at Dhaka at the end of the war, there were a lot of Midwestern soldiers, some of whom took these photographs of what was going on at the concentration camps run by the Nazis. Among those soldiers of Patton who arrived at Dachau at the war's end, there were many Midwest soldiers. Some of them took photographs of the horrors they found in the Nazi concentration camps. That St. Paul Jewish doctor, Jean Rinke, was in Patton's medical corps and had slide film in his camera when the U.S. troops arrived in Dachau, and he took what we know to be the world's only still color photographs of Dachau. All told, our exhibits at Traces document the rise of the Nazis, the terrible world war that they unleashed, and indeed the, the horrific consequences of the Nazi experiment. All of this seen through the eyes of Midwesterners, either here or those living or working in the Third Reich.